Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn with me, Alpha Bio Omega, in Ukraine. So as far as the situation in Ukraine in the real world goes, we have a number of things that could dramatically change in the upcoming days. Now first thing that I would like to mention is that Kyiv should come under a massive assault by the Russian forces uh, that are organizing in this area, preparing to strike at the city itself. Now, Kyiv, in the past two weeks of the war, has been turned into what I can only consider a fortress, or in other words, nightmare to conquer. The Russians have been repelled at least two times, when they tried to penetrate the outskirts of the city. And since then, the Ukrainian forces had a number of days to prepare roadblocks, defensive positions all along the outer perimeter of the city and also in the inner perimeter of the city. Now, fighting in the city is a nightmare for any type of armed forces. Just remember what happened in Stalingrad during Second World War. But here we could see the biggest bloodshed of the war that's raging right now. If that attack happens and if, well, and that's a big if, the Russians win, it will be, it will be over a massive, massive cost on their side. And I'm just hoping that they're a bit smarter than attempt that. And I'm also hoping that the Ukrainians know what they're doing in trying to defend the city. I've been also closely monitoring, uh, well, monitoring, how can you monitor it from, from abroad? But I've been watching the news and digging as deep as I could in regards to the foreign volunteers. And it seems like uh, today was the first day when uh, the foreign volunteers actually struck success in uh, the war. Ukraine claims there's about 40,000 of them already. I am not sure if this number is not uh, dramatically exaggerated, but uh, most of those that came and that are now being organized will be included in the defense of Kiev. So, fingers crossed, this, this might be the biggest fight of uh, the war. Now, what's kind of important to mention here as well is the fact that Kyiv is the capital city uh, where the government is, where the president Volodymyr Zelensky is and uh, most of his ministers. So losing Kyiv would be a big blow to the Ukrainian war effort. On the other hand, it's just a city. They can pretty much move to anywhere they want, to Lviv, to, I don't know, Venetia, to any other place if they want to. But taking Kyiv would be bad for both sides, so let's just put it that way. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that today another uh, round of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine took place, and Russia gave a pretty much, well, I don't want to call it an ultimatum, but they, they softened their offer but said that it's uh, the last offer. It pretty much requires all of the separatist republics to be left alone. Ukraine reducing their military to much smaller numbers and never joining NATO. Plus, there are other points that they need to fulfill. Like, I believe they need to uh, say that, you know, let's say, what's it, proclaim. They need to proclaim that Crimea is now part of Russia and other concessions on their side. It's pretty harsh, but it's better than the original offers. So I think that they mentioned that um, Ukraine has two days to respond to this ultimatum, which coincides with the preparations on attack on Kyiv, which is estimated to be launched in two days. So I'm really interested in seeing what's going to happen there. But I sort of hope that Ukrainians won't give up and that they will repel this attack just for the simple reason that the way the Russian forces has been conducting this war is more and more brutal and whatever hurts Russia now is for the good of us all because just today these idiots from Moscow ordered an attack which eventually resulted in the bombing of a children's hospital killing countless of infants and children 
in the nursing home and no, not, not nursing home. What is it called? Um, maternity home. The 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 place where you give birth, and there's a special word for it, which is a bit different than my language. So they murdered innocent children with their bombs. So that kind of doesn't speak volumes about how you should give them anything at this point. But I'm not I'm not a warmonger, so whatever they decide will be for the good of the nation. I'm pretty sure that uh, their president knows what he's doing. He's proven that in the past few days. But on the other hand, giving Russia anything after how they acted is just wrong. But McDonald's is uh, leaving Russia right now. MasterCard and Visa should be leaving uh, tomorrow, I believe. A uh, number of banks will be disconnected in the next you know few days so that's pretty cool i'm i'm pretty sure that russian ruble uh hitting an all-time low every day and with the prices of food already going higher is great news for russia okay let's uh, look into the game and uh, just leave the politics to the people that know what they're doing i'll keep bringing more news once they pop up in my news feed and on the servers and in the sources that i follow. So what we have done in the past episode is massive. We have joined NATO and you can verify that by us being only able to leave the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization right now. This means that Ukraine is pretty much safe because if we get attacked by Russia at any point in the future, it will trigger help from all of Europe and from United States, meaning that whoever attacks us is attacking the entirety of the alliance. Now, we are in the middle or maybe starting the second half of our military reform. We have just finished reforming our tank brigades. But I think that it's safe to say that Russia is no longer a threat. I am pretty certain at this point that they will not come after us. It's very likely that they went with the southern defensive option instead of going after Crimea, because we would already have them here if that was the option. Otherwise, I don't know what they're doing. So, threat of Russia, I think, is not what's bothering us right now, but there are other major wars that can pop up. So, we will continue chugging along, thinking about joining the EU, and hoping that we might unlock some of these things, because... I'm kind of interested in seeing what is in these idea groups. I have never, never really done that. So it might be interesting in seeing what's in there. So anyway, uh, we have just reformed our production queues as well. If you look into our production, we are now uh, dedicating two factories into the small arms production. We are producing ATGM 2000s. We are producing the C4 equipment, uh, which we're lacking, actually. So it will take about 100 days before we uh, re-equip, or not re-equip, I keep saying re-equip, but at this point we just need to equip all of our units with the C4 equipment, and then we can go back to re-equipping. We are producing the 2005 man pads. Uh, we're stockpiling utility vehicles at the rate of 1.3 per day. So pretty much seven, about 10, 10 per week. We're producing the APCs. Uh, we are upgrading our main battle tanks again, which is nice. We need 1,219 upgraded and we're producing 12.22 per week. The IFVs were missing 345 of those, which is not good, but we have two factories working on that, so we're producing slightly over one per day. So in about a year, we will have all of our units fully equipped. We're still producing some of the recon tanks. Uh, we are producing uh, a new self-propelled anti-air, which we have 179 to replace. And we have started recently producing mounted anti-tank uh, guided missiles. We have 327 to produce, but we're producing almost one per day, and we are looking at the production of potentially uh, three per day, I guess. So that's going to be good. And finally, we have started producing our first interceptors. These are the aged MiG-23s. So actually, you can imagine it as not MiG-23s. You can um, 
you can imagine it as a cheap knockoff of the current airpoints which are not that good um, because it will take us a number of years before we get up to date but you know the production has already started which is good uh, we're still training our armed forces and we have the airpoints training but i believe many of those okay you can actually stop so can you so can you you guys though need to go a bit further you can stop as well yeah we managed to get most of these into regular uh state so they got extra air attack of four percent extra agility of six percent night operation penalty is lowered by four percent and their uh, losses over Wait, when the air ring takes damage, it loses experience. The losses reduced by 40% over from the territory. Okay, so yeah, our, our fighter pilots, or fighter pilots would be the, the proper way to know how to use uh, their catapults. So, cool. And, okay, you need to train a bit more. So, we can leave a couple of these in the air. I don't know what the... Oh, actually, uh, we are no longer consuming more than we are producing. Good. 4.53k for the airplanes and about 200 for the army. Good. So next thing that we need to reform for us will be... Well, I guess uh, these guys, which is a fairly small but fairly fast unit 17 kilometers per hour actually that's not that fast you guys have almost the same speed so well, these are basically armored personnel carriers combined with a lot of utility utility vehicles it's basically fast moving infantry we should reform them now i already took the liberty of checking and again this template is unattainable for us so we need to change it like this to be able to keep it up to date. So this is the first step. I want to add more mechanized infantry. Then I want to add more motorized infantry. And I want to add one well, other tank company, the armored uh, scouts. I want to put in a self-propelled um, battery, artillery battery. I would like to put in self-propelled air defense battery. And the last one was artillery battery, and I believe that will allow us to put in two more units of mechanized infantry. So this will take 40, but it's going to be a pretty decent mix of uh, mechanized and uh, motorized infantry. And we could turn that small arms. Yeah, we will, we will require a lot of small arms. 750 per unit. Yeah, the Toyota vehicles will also go up, but we got 1881 in storage, so that's good. Manpad, self-propelled, anti-air. Yeah, this is this is good. Just the design is a bit expensive for us right now, as we have only free army experience available. Uh, let's use this to repay the depth. And we have 140 political power. So let's see if we can use it to take down the foreign influence in our territory. Hmm, combat foreign influence. Well, we're at 46% now. So I think we can just combat foreign influence as a general rule. Now, as we are in the NATO, we're going to finish some of these. Uh, uh, what are they? I need to go up. Uh, some more of these focuses on infrastructure and then we are going to try to get into European Union and if we manage to do that that will pretty much solidify our position in Europe. Now what's kind of funny is that in case a war breaks out in which the NATO would be involved at this point I kind of think it would be just us maybe a bit of France maybe a bit of Germany but I don't really think many of the other nations have that strong of an army. Certainly in the Czech Republic, which I checked, has two units. Uh, well, at the start of 2017, so I don't expect them being much better at this point. Poland could 
Poland has a traditionally strong army because they feared Russia for a while. Turkey also has a strong one, but it depends if it would be European conflict or NATO conflict. So we're gonna have to see. I'm also very happy with the fact that we now have enough technology medals. I'd like to get more steel for ourselves, but already the production is suffering a bit because we are importing... Oh, not the production. The construction is suffering because we are importing technology medals for our production. So, that's something we need to keep in mind. We are very strongly relying on the infantry fighting vehicles. I actually think this might be a pretty modern doctrine, thinking about it, because I'm, I'm not a fan of Czech military, but I'm closely following them. And as Czech army has transitioned to a completely professional military force, it is now incapable of defending Czech Republic in case of an invasion, but it is extremely well integrated into NATO and I'd even say it into European structures in which we have one of the best anti-chemical uh, units. We have a very good special operations units and we have several good uh, brigades that served in Iraq, that helped in Afghanistan, uh, they served in the Balkan Wars, and the army is extremely professional. But what it relies upon now is strictly non-heavy, in the meaning that heavy is tanks, non-heavy units, and they are using IFVs and APCs as their main means of movement. Now, that's actually a, a huge contract uh, to be signed, or actually you could call it a tender because it's not uh, gotten into the contract stage yet, uh, but Czech Republic is looking for a new supplier of IFVs because they're still using very aged, uh, pretty much renovated Soviet type IFVs and APCs. And they want to, they want to get, actually you could, that's the thing, I checked the Czech technology tree in the game and they're using uh, Panthers, which are modern, and in my opinion, modern APCs, but they're not listed in the game as APCs for the Czech army, which might be because they don't uh, come from the Czech, um, Czech production. They're actually foreign produced. So maybe that's why they're not in their technology tree. But uh, for the IFVs, we are currently looking for a new supplier. And there's a number of options for us. So I'm really interested in seeing what they will pick. It's a shame that this tender actually started somewhere around 2017. And now it looks like it's going to be cancelled and started again. Uh, because the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine has put a light on certain demands that the Czech army hasn't really considered before. So, yeah. Anyway, fuel refining 2 has been finished. Fuel gain per oil increased by 20% and fuel gain from biofuel refineries increased by an additional 10%. Amazing. So, can we go with the construction now? I think that it's a, it's a good time to speed up the construction. The future of efficient construction will require more extensive planning for individual projects as well as standardized solution whenever possible. So let's go with that because that's gonna speed things from and we are going to get the new self-propelled artillery. I don't think we're using this one though. Which is kind of weird. I still don't know who or which units are using that. It's kind of weird. Okay, an industrial biofuel processing has been finished. A network of factories for synthetic distillation and refining of oil products is the next step towards ensuring the fuel supply for our nation. So as we're working on the nanofibers in medicines, I'm thinking we might want to go with the genetic engineering. It's fairly expensive but it gives you bonus to population of which will eventually you know stack very nicely you can see each one of these gives you extra five percent and that's not something you can completely throw out of the window but do we want to maybe go with these first 
Are the AI robotics? We might. Machine learning. Okay, let's go with machine learning for this point. The development of the theory of machine learning at its core is the ability for a computer algorithm to improve automatically through experience. Developing this within our AI protocols can allow them to learn newer industrial tasks quicker and as well as improve research and development. So let's go with that. And we are going to soon get this self-propelled artillery. Now this is way ahead of time. And we are also using a regular artillery within some of our units. So I think that might be a good research as well. Tornado, I still don't know how to use you, honestly. An extremely heavy artillery that, if not dealt with, can destroy entire cities. Let's see the difference here. So the regular artillery or self-propelled has defense of 21, this is 34. Heart attack 15 is the same. Armor is the same. Piercing is the same. This one has higher max speed, which is kind of funny. Soft attack ha is higher here, but breakthrough is higher here. So I think there's not that much reason for us to go that way. Let's instead... And we really shouldn't neglect the doctrines here. IFVs are way too expensive for us. Hmm. I think we're gonna... Actually, you know what? We're gonna go with Recon. That's gonna give all of our units quite a lot of Recon. And we should be here. Pretty much. So that's extra 4 Recon for all of our units. So let's get that. Extra reconnaissance to all of our units. 250 days for that. I am fine with it. So, uh, we can repay more debt. Look at that. We're sub 30 billion in debt. We're getting 0.13 billion per day. And I think I might actually go ahead and lower the taxes now. Okay, I lowered it by 2%. That actually gave me about half of our income to what we had before and gave me an extra factory here. Well, that's not great, but I think it's still better than nothing because stockpiling this money might be important, but with this low debt, it's actually pretty fine. Okay, I think it's time that we stop all of the trainings here. Some of you might still train, but it's good and we need to put up the self-propelled artillery to upgrade some of our units so wait, the tank should be behind you i think i moved that just for the sake of and the mounted atgm could be here behind the cars so we need 128 self-propelled artillery upgraded, which is not that bad. Hey, and we built our first aircraft. We got one in reserve, and we're already bound to produce 10.22 per year, so we're almost at one per month. Happy, happy, happy. Let's go those prototypes, because in 123 days, we're going to have the Su-27 flying course available, and at that point, we are finally going to have something that would be good to produce at least semi semi well semi professionally or semi semi seriously is the right word but yeah we're gonna just jump ahead here and then to the 2015 still ahead actually maybe not we are still quite ahead 3.81 years so we can produce the flankers we can get the frost, levels, uh, frost vectoring engines and wait for this one to become available to us. At which point this MiG-41 air superior fighter might be a good idea to research even if it's a bit of a side walk. 6.5th generation air superior fighter. Yeah. 
I think I spoke about the drones in one of the previous episodes, haven't I? Yeah. This one, I believe, could be considered considered the uh, Bayraktar from Turkey. I mean, why might want to produce those? Because they're pretty damn good. Their air defense is. Let's compare these. Well, no, it's not that great. Nor is their agility. The strategic bombing is amazing. Air attack is awful. So these definitely, yeah, they're working as close air support, and we could be happy with the knowledge that no one is dying because of us. So more bombing and killing of foreigners, but we finished the UZ. UZ is the name of the state-owned company that currently possesses massive monopoly on the majority of the Ukrainian railroad. So Ismail gets extra infrastructure, and we can continue with the high-speed trains. The rail network is extremely important to the economic prosperity of Ukraine. It is important to upgrade from our older systems to newer, higher speed trains. It is highly worthwhile to invest in the expansion of our trains as we have one of the largest rail networks in all of Europe. So let's work on that. That seems smart. Okay. Estonia started to have emerging outlook. Tilt? Teet, Teet Tomsalu. Estima Uhendatut Rahva Partai. Interesting. Can declare war on country with the same ideology group? Hmm. Well, uh, one thing that you guys started pressuring me into is, and I mentioned that before, increasing our power over. Transnistria, and we could effectively puppet them and get them into our own um, into our own zone of influence. So actually, start doing that. We're gonna start spending our influence on them in hopes that eventually we might fund. Oh, we could provide them with military aid. We can choose to send a one-time shipment of guns and other equipment to Transnistria. In return for influence and boost in relations. However, this will negatively impact our standing with any of their enemies. You can only ship out APCs, IFVs, and infantry equipment until we can find a better way of designing the system. Sorry. Ah, okay, that's from the <laughs> from from the creators. I think I might actually start improving the relations as well with them. Because we want to have a bit more influence there. So let's do that. Monthly growth in states have been 81,000 and recruitable 742. Ukraine has actually, that's something I haven't mentioned, Ukrainian population has decreased by about 10 million in the last 20 years. No, oh, maybe like 15 million. Uh, no, no, that's still too much. I think it was like 55 million and now it's like 44 before the war. Now it's gonna lower even more, but a lot of these people are moving into Europe. Romania has the same problem as Ukraine. These two countries have dr dramatically, uh, they're, they're dramatically suffering from uh, people moving out from emigration and it's hurting their economy severely because it's unfortunate truth that these smart people move out while the less educated stay. So that means that these, these countries are suffering from something we saw in my democracy playthrough which can be summarized as brain drain, where the smartest people with the highest degrees and potential are just move out. It stopped in Ukraine, of course, by the fact that it has a crushing level of, um, of corruption that is just making people not want to live there. So... Hmm, Russia wants to build a factory in Galicia, Volhynia. We are going to decline that offer because we are almost done with our own construction there. So I don't need your dirty Russian money. We will do it ourselves. Now, can we boost the production of the factory? 
Yes, we're gonna go with the industrial projects. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. That is gonna benefit us significantly. Yes. So with this factor up, we might get additional factory to help with the construction, meaning that we are for free, uh, well, you know, in quotation marks, but for free importing the technology metals while we are back with the factories, uh, you know, we're back up to factories as we were before. So it would benefit us if we could lower the taxes even further, but I don't want to go all crazy here. So you get Western Outlook in Italy, that's good. What's the production at this point? We are short only 400 guns, and then we have rearmed all of our units with the new ones, so that is amazing. Only 251 ATGMs, and we have finally equipped all of our units with the C4 equipment, meaning we need to upgrade 3913 of the command equipment. But you know, 2.36 per day, that is going to make a huge difference. Man pads, we got utility vehicles, mounted ATGMs, recon tanks, producing the main battle tanks. We're almost at maximum efficiency, very close to it, Nine, well, 8.5% to left. And we are producing about two tanks per week. That is decent, you know, for one factory anyway. And we have four general four fighters. Spain left the European Union. Goodbye. I think I missed that being true. I know that someone triggered article. I think it's article fourteen of leaving the EU. But I thought it was Sweden. No, Sweden actually did that. Now Spain, but didn't someone else? Want to leave you? No, it was probably Spain, huh? Yeah, nationalist outlook. And these guys will screw up every good thing. Okay, so at this point I think it's safe for us to take away one of those factories. And that means we are going to start producing the self-prepared artillery. Now we're starting with 2.6 per month, meaning we can get to about 10 per month. Well, definitely more than one per week, which is okay. So we finished the grants for high-speed trains. Amazing. Uh, I'm not going to do another high proof just for the sake of roleplay. That's, that's not happening in Ukraine in 2011. But we can start with the European Union integration. Successful reforms allowed us to approach the European civilization of which Ukraine will soon become part. So let's do that and on that note end this episode. We haven't really moved um, further in the military reform that we wanted to do, but I have to say that I'm still happy with the amount of work that has been done in this episode because, you know, equipping our units is super important. What kind of army reforms itself but does not use modern equipment and I believe that if we now check any of our infantry units like this one the artillery brigade you can see their soft attack being 122 defense 91 and are they fully re-equipped or are you one of the unlucky ones that still wait for a bit of guns no they are almost done only two small arms and here we can see the old artillery yeah, we need to produce some more modern artillery because I believe this is this is fairly bad. Uh, I guess after the nanofibers in medicine, we might switch that one to the artillery because these ones have defense of ten and soft attack of nineteen. These ones have defense fourteen, soft attack forty one. That is such a massive difference. So I believe that might be a good idea, though arguably we are running short in factories again. We're missing oh, carrier fighters, that's fine, light jets, that's fine, strike fighters. Uh, well, nothing, nothing of value was lost. I can just um, reduce uh, the 
counts of units in each one of these you know like say like this and it will remove the need for those though wow you lost a lot of aircraft you can do 109 so else you lost one you lost one as well yeah casualties of trainings are kind of high in this game <laughs> but this should remove most of the complaints right someone else actually wow Dunbus airfield is overloaded so that needs to be rectified I had no idea that you guys were that bad let's put you up here let me give you two levels it's gonna be pretty quick but yeah I believe we don't need any more production now so anyway thank you very much thank you it's it's when I put the mouse in here that's when it happens thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode of Ukraine in which we are officially going to join the EU